Welcome to episode 2 of LGBT History. Please can I have an image of Stonewall? <sighs> no, not a stone wall. Stonewall. As in Stonewall Inn. It's a bar in New York City and also the location of what is commonly known as the modern day catalyst for the LGBT rights movement. Thank you! <sighs> Now a little background to understand the situation of the times. In the UK, the Sexual Offences Act of 1967 made it legal for certain homosexual acts to be committed by two consenting men in private over the age of 21. And oddly enough, a nationwide repeal of the USA's sodomy laws only took place in 2003. Though, hands up to Illinois, who actually repealed them in 1962, a whole 10 years before any other state decided to follow suit. And a whole 5 years before the UK did. Go Illinois. So let's keep that in mind whilst watching this video. I mean, obviously those laws all revolve around sex. <gasps> let's be honest, anyone's problem with the LGBT community is all to do with what happens in the bedroom. Just put it out there. There wasn't a great love for us in the LGBT community, but it was known that the police did raids pretty much everywhere <laughs> due to licensing issues amongst other things and it wasn't just in known gay bars. But we're talking about Stonewall, a small tavern in Greenwich Village, Lower Manhattan, New York City, ran by the Mafia with no liquor license, it was the only bar where gay men were allowed to dance with each other. You can imagine it was pretty popular, though it was illegal to serve alcohol to gay men and for two men to dance with each other. God help the gays of today back then. Raids usually took place due to that lack of liquor license, but bar staff usually knew when a raid was going to happen due to a police tip-off? Is that right? Believe it or not. And business usually carried on right after it happened. But let's remember, this was during a time where oppression against any minority group was quite severe, and gay men were targeted a lot. During a raid, customers would be lined up, and if they didn't have ID or were dressed in full drag, they'd be arrested. If there were women in the bar, they had to wear at least three pieces of feminine clothing, yeah, to find feminine. Otherwise, they'd be arrested as well. Now the monumental piece of our history, the whole point of this video, took place in the early hours of Saturday morning, 28th of June 1969. Eight police officers arrived to raid the Stonewall Inn, which was filled to over capacity with around 200 people inside, but it didn't quite go the routine way they'd expected. And that stone that made the mountain crumble was a lesbian, protesting that her handcuffs were too tight and the arresting officer he hit her on the head with a baton, or a billy club, and all hell broke loose. The patrol wagon was nearly overturned, bricks started to be thrown, with Marsha P. Johnson, a popular transgender drag queen, being widely recognised as one of, if not the first person, to start fighting back. These events took place around 1.20am, and by 4, the streets were cleared. But news of what happened spread across Greenwich Village like wildfire, and riots took place the following night, and again on the following Wednesday, with thousands taking part. Let it be known that following the Stonewall riots, a movement was born. Oppression against the LGBT plus community would not be tolerated, and protests would start to happen all over the world. But you probably know those protests as Pride. Where every year, you celebrate who you are. Never stop. People died so you could celebrate. People died so you could be who you are. Don't forget that. Thank you for checking this video out. And if you want to learn more, please don't hesitate in checking out Stonewall online. Even the Stonewall Inn's website, they have a very intense history of what happened on the night. Pretty much where I got all my research from for this video. And please do let me know who or what you would like me to cover in this series. Thanks. <laughs>